Welcome to the first part of the filament dehumidifier series. As I explained in explained before, this is a series that I've been planning on doing for quite some time now. Basically, simply because I managed to ruin a lot of my filaments based on humidity. For example, you can see this carbon fiber filament is, you know, very fragile. And yeah, that's at that because of that reason I wanted to figure out a good way of dehumidifying that filament. There are a few commercial products available for this purpose and I'll link a few in the description below just in case you're interested, but yeah, they're pretty pricey and yeah, I decided it would be pretty easy to make my own. And the reason that I've been delaying these videos for some time now is because I wanted to make this video as a more of a tutorial rather than my usual build log style that I do with the Black Widow mod series, but I decided to do it like the same way that I do the Black Widow mod series, so there will be multiple parts to this, showing my progress over a few parts, and when I'm done and when I get finally satisfactory results, I will also make a tutorial version of this as well, so Today we will begin with the overview of the parts and the ideas. I explained a few of these in the channel update videos, but I don't know. I might not. I might have not explained everything. So I'll try to go over everything that I can, and yeah, we'll see how it goes. So the idea is to use a electric heater like this one. I think I'll probably end up using this one just and to heat this chamber. I'm going to use rubber seals under these parts and then I'm going to print clamps and clamp it from these spots and yeah that should basically make sure that there is no humidity escaping the chamber sorry entering the chamber and I will have these two dehumidifiers these are from um, they're available from the Amazon US store I imported these but these work just fine with the European voltages as well. I live in a 220 volt place so it works just fine. I have tested these. So if you're interested in them I'll link them in the description below as well. I did modify these which I'll get to in a second. There used to be a US plug there. Now there is some cable coming out there. And yeah I'll get to the details of that later in this video. Uh, we will also need some 3D printed parts obviously, but they are not finalized yet. I don't know why this is here, but yeah, what we will need is an Arduino. I'm pretty sure an Arduino Uno will be enough. I don't think we'll need anything fancier than this, but yeah, we will see at the end of the project. We will also need a relay board and a relay board with two relays. Make sure that these are 5 volt relays, so they work with the Arduino just fine. We will use one of the relays for the heater and the other relay for these. So the dehumidifier will also have a mode for uh, dehumidifying the silica gels inside these dehumidifiers. I know it gets complicated, but I hope you get what I mean. And yeah, they will be through. They will be used through this. I will write a custom software for the Arduino. It's not finalized yet. But yeah, it should be working. It should be work. It should work fine. It it should work fine. I'll also make a custom 3D printed enclosure, and that's that enclosure is 90% complete. So yeah, it's it should be pretty easy to finish it. We will also need a screen. This is a Winstar screen. I'll link it in the description below, just in case you need it. This is a 20 by 4 screen and that's basically because uh, we will need a larger screen for this so 16 by 2 isn't going to be enough for me I'll also need a 5 volt supply for the Arduino we will need this AM2302 sensor hopefully the one that I have works I haven't tested it yet at least not with the Arduino you know the story with the Raspberry Pi and we will need a bunch of buttons the exact quantity may change, so I'm not going to tell that at the moment. But yeah, that's all we will need for this project. And yeah, you will also need a way of hanging the filament inside the box, which I'll get to the specific box in a second. And yeah, for that I'm planning on using these clips on the sides and using a clothes hanger like this or like this, depending on the size that I find and use it inside this box. And there is something special about this box, and that is 
there are clips for the spokes available on Thingiverse. I'll link them in the description as well. And those clips will allow me to mount this and have a seal around here with the rubber seal, which I'll, I don't have yet, but I know I can find it pretty easily. This is from IKEA. This is a Samla box. I don't know how you pronounce that, but I'll link it in the description below. This is one size larger than what uh, we will need, but this is the one that I, they had at the store at the time I visited it. So this is what we will use for this project, but you can go with the one smaller size if you prefer. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So let's get to the work. Let's get to working on this project. And this is the current work in progress layout for the the dehumidifier box. As you can see, I have this heater here, and it's not supposed to be that close actually. It will sit somewhere like here. These two silica gel boxes will be right next to it, just for symmetry sake. And I will just put the filament that I want to dry here. The heater won't be directly blowing into the filament. It will be blowing like this, and that's just to prevent any hot spots on the filament. And that is important because the filaments usually have a glass transition temperature and if you exceed that temperature, well, you basically destroy the filament. So that is actually pretty important. And there is actually a potentially better use case for this design. If you get like a close metal hanger th thing, rod basically, across here, you can basically hang a few filaments here. and. Drill some PTFE tubing holes here. PTFE part is just to isolate the outside air with the inside air and use this for a uh, filament box as well. This isn't suitable for my setup on my Black Widow. If you watch my Black Widow mods, you will know. But if that is suitable for your setup, I definitely recommend you do it that way just to make your life easier and less messy, like all having less boxes and stuff around. But obviously it's not suitable for my setup. If it were, I'll do it that way. But anyway. Now it's time to add the rubber seal. So, and as you can see, this is the triple, sorry, double D shaped rubber sealant. You can find these in pretty much any hardware stores. These are normally used for sealing, you know, windows and balcony doors, etc. Stuff like that. And yeah, these are basically made out of rubber. We will be using them to mount on the edges. As you can see, I've done one of the sides so far. And yeah, there will be a little bit of a gap in the corners. That's not really a big deal. In fact, it would probably work fine even without this. But this is just a bit more of a sealant to let the humidity... Actually, silica gels absorb the humidity inside here, but not the humidity from the room, which these won't be sufficient enough. So, yeah, that's the reasoning behind this. So I'm going to apply this now, and then I'm going to print some clamps for the cover of the box. And then, yeah, we will try it and see if they, we can steal them through. Uh, I think I'm printing six of them right now, six clamps. And yeah, we will move along, move on from that. As you can see I now have the clamps and you can see that it's putting decent enough pressure on there. It's not putting the most pressure like this but it's I think good enough to seal and as I said I printed six of those, two on each side and one on the larger size as well and yeah that's the situation I now sold so let's move on.
So I've made some progress on the control box of the humidifier. This will be the back side. It just has a standard, I forgot what you call this, but it's basically power plug and a switch here. And on the front, it just has filament dehumidifier. Now this is supposed to have a top piece. Uh, this is a print of the top part that failed Something related to the 3D printer, but nothing important, but yeah, it failed Right here, but it's supposed to go all the way down there and this will have the screen here and six buttons in total And that will be how I control the Control the dehumidifier and it will attach with using four screws on two on each side and yeah, that's basically the control box design. Also, as you know, I have all the parts that I need for the in terms of the electronics as well. So we should be able to start working on this pretty soon. I will need to redesign this because well, I got the diameter of these holes wrong. So yeah, there's some work, design work left to do. That's why I'm not sharing the files of these yet. But they will be available on Thingiverse pretty soon, and I will tell you when. And lastly, in this video, I will walk you through the process of replacing the plug connector on the back side of the dehumidifiers with what cables. So the first thing to do is to remove the top part of the the part of the dehumidifier, the part where the clothes hanger part is. You just have to play with it. There are some clips. You just basically jam a flathead screwdriver until you get it out. The next thing to do is empty the the silica gels into a plastic bag that you have and yeah check and make sure you say, put it in a safe place and by the way there are like 380 ish grams of silica in there plus probably 20 in another part so that's good now the next thing is to remove the back part using the four screws you can see on the screen right now remove them and this is the part that we end up with so we now have to remove the heater element from the metal plate and then again jam a screwdriver through here until we get this part off then get the cable off like so we now have the plug again jam a screwdriver and here are the connectors so what I did is just soldered a new cable to those and then assembled everything back the way I tell, told you I passed through the cables through the holes for the plug and then used some duct tape to make sure it's protected in there and doesn't the silica gel stone just got out assembled it using the same screws and then filled it up from the top I did spill a little bit but I'm sure at least like 350 grams of it made inside just fine so it should mostly work and yeah that's it for this video I plan to make two more videos on this but don't quote me on the exact amount what we have to do next is to finish the, the control box and also write the Arduino software for that assemble the control box the electronics and yeah I think that's it I might also try to replace the heater that I'm using but yeah I think that will be it and we will also have to test it obviously and yeah as I said I expect these things to take two more parts of these videos and yeah that's it as I said so I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give me a like down below and thanks for watching